Good morning, folks. Solar storm watch is in effect for the next several days. The solar wind variations have begun. Stronger impacts incoming, and we've got top science news as we start with our star. Watching the last two days here to see the fury of activity, as we mentioned yesterday afternoon, we've got a multiple coronal mass ejection scenario set to impact Earth over the coming days. Not major or scary, but a good test of Earth's weakening magnetic field. Now, since we spoke yesterday, a couple more flares and eruptions have occurred, but the southern active region is beginning to turn away, and the story we're watching closely is the solar wind. We already see an amplification of geomagnetic conditions following a phi angle flip in blue, a solar wind magnetic reversal associated with a sector boundary, and elevated density and plasma speed this morning is setting the stage for the more significant impacts coming today and tomorrow. Repeating our forecast from yesterday, Geomagnetic storms are almost certain during these multiple impacts, with a small chance of the severe and extreme storm levels. Localized and even regional electrical issues will be present and could be seen in energy, communications, and travel sectors. The health risks known to be associated with solar storms are expected to be elevated during this time. And for those still making the comments about the jab, yeah, that does seem to be an issue as well. It's just that all the dozens of major studies on solar health effects use pre-2020 data. It turns out there's more than one way to cook a chicken. Indeed, more eruptions are possible as several active regions are on the sun at the moment. Southern sunspots begin to turn away but are not out of Earth-directed eruption potential yet. The central sunspots and ones growing behind them do get a healthy dose of suspicion as they traverse the Earth-facing portion of heliographic longitudes. First article up today shows the biggest hydrological impacts and climate shifts over time in Australia, including Le Champ, when a massive flightless megafaunal bird went extinct. The periods identified match up with the known geomagnetic excursions, volcanic upticks, and climate chaos. The half-cycle Heinrich events are shown to vastly impact the hydrological environment in India, also with contributions from volcanic sources, leading to similar climate chaos. And we also have a PhD thesis on these events, mostly focused on Heinrich events, specifically the one that took out the Neanderthal. This concept is one known to observers already after the top study of 2019 in the world's number one geophysics journal. This one is free to read, by the way, and it discusses the severe biosphere impact of geomagnetic excursions, like the one we're entering now, and which include the Heinrich events, climate chaos, volcanic forcing, and major disappearances of species, including the Neanderthal. These geomagnetic polarity shifts occur about every 12,000 years, during which the half-cycle Heinrich events occur, which also hit during the 6,000-year midpoints as well. The Atlantic is already almost at AMOC shutdown and ice rafting potential now, and it's all set to unfold over the coming years. For more on this topic, the history, and the ongoing event and what we can expect to see on Earth, try the playlists below the video or our books on the subject, Links are all in the description box below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.